feel better? I just I just claimed all the cleaned all the stuff right off your face, you know. I mean you look a bit dirty there. You know, I just clean around your chin. <laughs> It's marvelous. We could do something on an opening. I mean, you can't just sit there and have your fingers up your nose. Ah, oh, boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, boy. Oh, yeah, you want me to watch her? That's whiskers, by the way. I think it's whiskers. It was a coffee. <laughs> Oh, I know what that was. I'll tell you. A chicken. <laughs> A chicken gravy just run down the corner of your mouth. I didn't notice it. <laughs> I don't say on last night's live stream at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'll, I don't know. <laughs> Anybody around the world want to say hello? <laughs> right, right now, during this live stream, I'm uploading uh, Theo Part 2 of the end, end of it. Right, Don't be the end of it. Um, inquest is over. We're going on there today, Flying Bay, one, two, three days of it. Uh, poor Theo's father's up there with his mother, with his wife. Um, I really hate to think what they've been through. I really do. Um, I watched 60 Minutes again. I watched Channel 9 again. And really, the media should be shot. I mean, one news reporter said he walked down through the car park. Another story was that they're trying to make out he walked from the hostel straight across the top of the hill, right over there to the beach. And yet their own story, they show him walking out of the cheeky monkey, wait, like, here's a hostel where the telephone is up there behind me, right? The beach is over there in the corner of the Australia flag. So trying to make our first we walked over there. Then the cheeky monkey's down here about where my eyeball is. And he walks out the door this way, turns down here, goes down here, and he goes up here. And then the GPS drops out. Then he comes back across, walking parallel to the park. Then it shows him walking diagonally down onto the park footpath. Then it shows him walking out across the street, right down over here to Short Street, where I met the French backpacker, which I really wish wasn't there. I mean, that guy was such a, a goose. He says, oh, see, oh, hey, see, oh, that was last year, 12 months ago. No, it was two and a half years ago. I've been here for three years, he says, lives at Brunswick. What's he doing sleeping in the back of a van up a dead-end street? When later on in the video, I show a sign-up says, you catch sleeping in your car as a backpacker, you get a $1,000 fine. He's obviously lying. He's backpacking. I seen his bed in the back of the bloody car. Because he probably thought I was a cop, probably thought I was a ranger, probably thought I was a detective or something. Because he kept saying, why are you filming? Why are you filming? Why are you filming? And that's why you listen to the videotape where you see the picture, that video down on my channel, you see the picture of the car sitting there. When I go to him, you hear him in the background saying, why are you filming? Why are you filming? And I walk away from you. And I said, and I, I just put my hand up behind him. I went like this, you know. And he said, yeah, 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 yeah. One of those, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, these backpackers wonder why they get bumped off. They wonder why they get murdered. They wonder why they get kidnapped. They wonder why they get exploited on these farms. Because they don't listen. You know, it's just, it's like the girls down in South Australia. They're on that, um, nearly got murdered by a hitchhiker guy. You know, the two girls are hitchhiking. They nearly got murdered down there on a beach. Because they didn't listen to their bodily instincts. 
They nearly both got murdered. And they later on, they said, well, we didn't feel right getting in the car with him. Well, why did you? Because they didn't listen to their own instincts. So many people don't listen to their own instincts. A lot of people don't listen to their own think, does that feel right? Well, that's exactly what happened to Theo. Did Theo think he was in danger? No. I'm going to take everything out away from the media. Just take everything out of the media that the media, media has put on about Theo all around the world. Now, I'll tell you why I hate the media. If my son Chris is on there, talk more. <laughs> Hello, Chris. Right. People don't listen. They hear, but they don't listen. Is that right, Chris? How many times have I said to people, you're not listening, you don't get it, you don't follow it? Is that right, Chris? Leave me a comment. Is that true? Is that what I've always said to you the whole time you, you know, I've been in your life? People don't listen. People don't see. They look, but they don't see. They just, Oh, I didn't see that. Oh, did you see that happen then? Oh, I missed that. Let me tell you that expression. See? I don't. I'm a sharp old fox. Uh, oh, yeah. Can I have a can of that, uh, Chris? A, a big, about a big bucket full of it. What you wrote up on the screen. Yeah, can I have a big bucket? A big, you know, the big milk drum ones? Yeah, one of them. Ah. Right. Uh, <laughs> I'll agree with that one. Yeah, that's right. Might. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, they don't listen. Now, the media and this uh, British YouTuber, or was it American? American. He turned around and he said, Why? Did Theo turn left? Why didn't he go back to his hostel? He should have been there in 20 minutes. And then I looked at the brochure. This is, I'm just going to go through some of the bullshit I found out that people all got wrong. He says, 20 minute walk from the cheeky monkey back to his hostel. Now, the cheeky monkey's up over there. Fine Bay roundabout set. Now, my mate, my son Chris, he knows. How long would it take you to walk up past um, Kennedy Street to go out past Byron Bay, you know, where we stood there that day and the Byron Bay South Power train went past where the green fog is, and you go right up the dead end of that street, almost to the end. How long would that take you to walk from there right back down over the solar power level train crossing, take the first street on the left next to the train tracks behind which is like train tracks, houses, that street, and then come down next to the motel opposite the police station, then come around over to the roundabout. That backpacker that backpack was chasing the shearers, uh, chasing the shearer. Well, I think you're right. That's what he's doing. He's chasing the girl. He could have been chasing the girl. And whereabouts do you think that it, your son's here, Chris? All stinky bums here. There he is. Look, hello. Look. There you go. 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 Has been near me all day, all day, all day, Chris, all day. Just come in, sit on the chair, get on the YouTube, and I start talking. He wants to come in and, uh, you know, it just throws you, just ticks you off. Anyway, um, would you say that'd be a twenty-minute walk from the hostel down past the old meatworks factory? Over there and down to the roundabout. That'd be about 20 minutes, wouldn't it? Byron Bay roundabout. Well, 
Well, they're hanging out with him two days prior. Really? Is that the guy I met, Blair? Was he hanging out with Theo, was he? Well, there we go. Go on, keep writing. Oh, that's a big talk guy I met at your place. He was hanging out with Theo. Hey, yes. Two days before he went missing. Is that what you're saying? Blair's a homeless person, Byron Bay. Is that right? The Blair, the big tall guy. I know you already said yes once. Blair, the big tall guy I met at your place. It was home. Yes. And it definitely was Theo. Did he say it, him himself? Have you seen him yet to say, yeah, that was Theo? Wait for an answer. Did Blair say his, his name was Theo or did he show you a picture of him or did he introduce you to him or or did you say that was a guy I was hanging around with that disappeared or what? What was it? I haven't seen him for about a week, but he should be coming around shortly. Right. You want me to keep the live stream going until he comes around? You mean shortly, what, half an hour or four hours? Because I'm not going to sit here for four hours waiting for Blair to show up. But there you go. Unbelievable. So Theo went out one of my son's mates, a homeless person in Byron Bay, who's six foot, what is he, six foot three? No, he's going to put his, oh, right, okay, he's got to do his doll form or something, does he, or something, whatever, yeah, all right. Well, there you go, and what he wants to read it, it's on the live stream, go and read it yourself. Blair hanging out with him two days prior. Yes, yes. Go replay the tape. Replay the his YouTube, right? Go back and replay. But there you go. He's hanging out with him. Because it six foot and is my cousin on mum's side. There you go. I know that. I know I know it's your cousin. Um he's a harmless guy. I know that he's harmless. But he's just, as I say, he's up there with the planet. He's up there with the wild turkeys. <laughs> well, that's half of them up there or, or on the wild side. You know, they're up there in the Goo Goo World, Byron Bay. Marlon Bimby, Nimmin, it's all under that big, beautiful triangle, as they call it. You know yourself. You know yourself, Chris. When you leave, um, He's off, he's off with the yowie. <laughs> he found a yowie today, did he? Oh, was he really hairy? What, you got a mustache and whiskers, has he? Oh, probably. Oh, well, keep it, that's one. Yeah, no, your son's having a joke with me. He knows I do yowie stories, Bigfoot stories here in Australia as well, so he just, he's just cross-contaminating the conversation, as I call it. Yeah, so the media says uh, it's 20 minutes from where you're staying into Byron Bay, down the Cheeky Monkey. It's 20 minutes to the roundabout, which is at the level crossing. And then, then you walk all the way down the Cheeky Monkey. And I looked up there myself, it's 3.7 kilometres from Cheeky Monkey back to his hostel. There's no way in the world he's going to walk 3.7 kilometres in 20 minutes. No way. So, so there's another YouTuber getting his facts wrong. He's in America. He's never been out here, and he's telling us how far it is. And yet he couldn't pick up a phone and get the uh, cheeky monkey address and write from this address to this address and would have told him. Well, yeah, back to the pool to the hostel. Which pool are you talking about? You still got to go to the train tracks. Doesn't yeah? They said Barker Street and the Main Street. So what's Barker? Barker must be the other one on the side of the train tracks. 
because you can't get through the other side. There's that creek there that goes around the thing. Uh, but anyway, you got me a bit confused. I'm getting tired. Anyway, so that guy there got it wrong. Then 60 Minutes turned around and said, uh, there's a sign up there. He walked along the beach. He turned left, went up in the sand. There's a big sign up and it says, don't walk around the headland. Well, that's not a headland. That's a rock face. I found the sign on my own YouTube, on my own video recording, and I found it on Google Earth. It's when you walk up to the end of the beach and you turn right to walk around underneath the lighthouse. And it's there. You can see it clear as day. It's in my own video. You can see it. It clearly says, don't walk around the headland. And then I found a picture of it on 60 Minutes and I blew it up. It's the same shape sign, the same bit of wood sticking up on the top. And it says, don't walk around the headland. So 60 Minutes said, that sign over there is that sign up over here. There is no sign up over there. There's no need for a sign up there. It's just a dead end. Piece of sandy track, it goes up, there's a circle, and that's the end of it. It just doesn't go anywhere. There's no need for a sign because it's a sheer rock place. There's no way in the world. <laughs> Next mistake they made was um, I won't. No, his hostel was out of Belongia Beach. You got the right. No, I looked up his hostel. It's out there on that funny street. You've got to go. Where you come home from Belongia Beach, you and I, okay, picture this in your mind, Chris. You and I are driving over the level crossing with the salt power train cuts through and the green fogs on the right, right? You've been there with me. You turn left, you go out, you do the right, and then the left hand turn. And on the right, there's a car park where I used to park the bus once or twice in the green fair lane up there 20 years ago. Then you go a bit further up the street before it goes narrow. And just as it goes narrow, there's a little side street left. That's where that hostel is. It's out there. No, I'm not going to answer the phone. I'm going to hang it up. Hang it up. Thank you. No, I'm not going to answer it. I can hear the phone ringing. I'm not going to answer it. So his walk back from there, back into Byron Bay, takes 20 minutes, right? And then it takes another 20 minutes to walk down the Cheeky Monkey. So if it takes 20 minutes for the Cheeky Monkey to walk across and go up Tennyson Street, and then it shows him coming back down again and then across the other side of the park, that's 20 minutes. And they keep showing pictures of him walking outside that cheeky monkey, scrolling on his map. In one part of the picture, you can see it's a map, right? You can actually see on the 60 minutes, it's a map. And then he keeps going out, and then the GPS recording shows him going down. All those streets, I said, down Short Street, up Patterson Street, down whatever the street was, and come out on the beach the four entrance south from the headland. That he walks up about halfway down from the from the bushes to the soft hard sand. And then when he gets right up there near the headland, he gets close to the tip, close to the bush. But then they all said, oh no, tide was coming in, tide was going out, tide was halfway in. And I believe them. I looked up Sydney Tides and got them mixed up, got confused. I was saying quarter past 12 and I was saying 44, which is quarter two in your silly bloody brain. I got it wrong. Sorry, everybody. So I then found the Brunswick River Tide Chart. 1st of June, 2019. And it's been uploaded now. It's going to be part one and part two. Part two is being uploaded, so it sits on top of part one. It sits below part one, right? So, but he watches the Theo Hayes story. So it'd be the 160 hits on the first one with the band in it. Um, 
you know. I had two people in me bloody ear when I'm trying to do it, talking shit. Um, idiot bloody backpacker and some other bloody treat somewhere else is trying to say something else. You know, he just... Then I've got some guy standing up in the bushes watching me. I said that in the video clip. When I walk back, a lot of people haven't watched it. Part two, when I was up there at Brian Bay, I go walking around the car park and I go back because I'm dying of thirst. And I got down the big glass of water. Awesome. I mean, I was stuffed. And then I see this car sitting over there and I said, that's strange. When Chris and I went down the beach, I looked up and where the purple towel was, and I walking this way with Chris, I'm going this way, look back, there's a guy standing up looking at me and Chris. He was directly like looking at us like, he wasn't under the ocean this way, he turned left and looking at us. Why? And that was that yellow four-wheel drive. Something makes me interested. So if the police watch this. They should go around and see who that guy is. Who's that guy who owns that yellow four-wheel drive? That's what I'll be doing. So who is this guy? Is he a local? What's he doing hanging around up there? Is he a backpacker? Is he a psycho? Right, what's the next one they got wrong? So they got the toy charts wrong. They have got let the um Thing over at um, 1108, he got down there at whatever the video says, 1148. So I'm right. It was 20 minutes up the top end of Tennyson and back down there to the park. That's 20 minutes. And then a 28-minute more walk for him to go out through the streets and then walk right up the one kilometre. Yeah, it's one kilometre from where he walked out on the fourth, one, two, three, fourth trail out. It's one kilometre, one mile. And that's why, and I got it on the tape, when it uploads, go and watch it. Theo's part one, part two. Part two, I think it is. It shows, but I won't let all the cat, but you've got to watch a whole lot. You see, with, and then the media reporter gets in there and says, he walked down this trail from the car park. Channel 9 news reporter. No. 60 Minutes works for Channel 9. Shows him on the GPS walking down the trail. Mil Milne Street Trail. So what's the news reporter works for Channel 9? Can't even talk to their own buddy sister reporters and say, oh, what's the facts you've got on uh, Theo Hayes' Hayes's story? No. She just went up there and stood at the buddy gate of the buddy footpath and said, oh, yeah, this is it. Under Wiser, there's three more trails. They think they know they didn't do their homework. And yet Channel 9 Newsroom and 60 Minutes are in the same place, you know, the same network. Why couldn't they talk to each other? See? Misrepresent bullshit by media. It's always the same. Why did I hate the media until the phone rang? Right. The media used to put in the local... Sydney newspaper, train driver kills motorist. My father was a train driver. How does a train driver kill a motorist if a train set on rails and the guy doesn't stop at the stop sign and goes in front of the train? It's not the train driver kills the motorist. The motorist killed himself by driving in front of the bloody train, not the train driver. Don't blame the train driver. He's driving the train. That's why I don't ever believe the media. Several times my father killed have people die in their cars because they commit kamikazes in front of a train. You know, East Richmond, Vineyard, uh, Vineyard, the other one. Uh, where was another one? Mulgrave. That was coming into Mulgrave. Cleaned the guy up. We know Mulgrave, Chris. Right up the platform, we took him. Front wheels up the top, the top of the platform, the back wheels, and the guy was squished in like that. And the back wheels are down on the train tracks, and the front wheels are running along the top of the platform. They cleaned him up. And they said, train driver kills motorists. No, motorists killed motorists, not train driver. So I don't ever believe the media. They're bullshit. They're full of crap. At least I go and do me homework. I do me facts. Crudon. Hi, Crudon. 
might be crude on. Mr. Dog says he's going to back his bag. He's on the next spot. Next spot of um, Houston, right? He's coming over. <laughs> yeah, I spoke to crude on. I said, crude on, will you marry me? Crude on, will you marry me? We'll meet up over there in, um, what, are, what do you call it? Uh, what did I say? What was it? Bloody Island? Um, not Solomon's. Um, not the Mary. Samoa. We've got one, one Australian Samoa and one American Samoa. They're two miles apart. So I get a little canoe. Of course, go get married. So on the wedding thing over there in Samoa. And get it, get you Australian citizen. No, actually, no, no, you can paddle over to me and we'll sign the wedding certificate. No, way, then you come and ask Australian citizenship and then you can row back, <laughs> get back to Houston, and then apply for Australian visa. There you go. Chris, you can have a new mother. Mm, Mr. Screwed on Bear, how's that? And you'll have all these teddy bears as brothers and sisters. Mm. I'm for Chris. The one across the road from the Cheeky Monkey, the pool. I thought that was the RSL club. Anyway, I don't mean a level. Anyway, media got it wrong there. Then they got it wrong and they said he climbed the rock face. I'm thinking they meant he climbed the rock face straight above. They meant he climbed around the rock face. But what doesn't make sense is why did his phone sit there way up on the beach at 12 o'clock and the next day at one o'clock in the afternoon it's walking around the rock place but the police said he, he went climbed around the rock place and fell in well if he's going to walk around the rock place and go right around to get out of there why didn't he take his phone with him three people have already commented very good point if he was going to walk he's not going to leave his phone on the beach just to dump it he's going to take it with him He's going to walk around the rock face. No. He's put his phone there because he went for a swim. The next day, 12 o'clock, somebody's come along, same low tide, picked up his phone, they walked around the rock face 12 hours later. He's already drowned. He's already gone, floated away. He's, he's gone down. He's gone. Now, next question. Shoes, pants, let's say he went naked, right? Let's just say he went naked, right? More possibilities of finding something. Where's his phone? Never been found. Where's his shoes? Never been found. Where's his pants? Never been found. Where's the keys to his hostel? Did he have keys? Where's his shirt? Was he wearing a cap? I can't remember. I think he was he wearing a cap. I think he was. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they found his cap in the bushes, which is on the trail on the way out. Because he thought he was going to come back there with the other backpackers and he's dropped it and gone, oh, I'll, back there. I'll, I'll get on the way back. I've done that before. I've done that there with my own son, Chris. Oh, shit, left me hat in the car. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's in the car. I'll get it on the way back. You're going to be down there at midnight. You're not going to be worrying about picking up your hat. If you know you're coming back, you drop it there in the dark. It's black. It's dark. You know nobody else is going to come through there and pick it up, right? This is Byron Bay, South Beach, fourth, fourth lane down, out in the bush, and, like, his own uncle or father said, it's not the sort of place you want to go walking dark. It's not scary, but it's also not inviting. Now, look at me in my video when I went and got a drink of water. I sat there and I drank the big gulp of water and walked out in the car park I said, this is Saturday night. And there's nobody there. There's one car. It's a Saturday night. Where's all the backpackers? Where's all the tourists? Because the store is still shut. Like I said, coronavirus. But if you go down and look on my channel, straight after that upload, you'll see Byron Bay, schoolies night, party night, uh, Byron Bay party, schoolies night, and everybody's in town at midnight, 7 o'clock at night. They're in town. They're going to the pub. They're getting the pee. They're drinking the grog. They're smoking the hashish. They're smoking the weed out the back. 
or they've done whatever they're going to do. They're off being romantic down the scrub somewhere up in the local town like they used to. Mate, I remember parking my bus just around the back streets there, just off the main road of Byron Bay, off the main street, to be born a girl up and away in the back corner, back of a shop, and back in an old fashioned shop. I was like, oi, I'm in here, you know. Oh, sorry, mate. <laughs> no. It's Hormone Palace. <laughs> Warren Bay. It's not like the average suburban town. People are friendly, kind, laid back, hippie like. Girls wear, back in the day 20 years ago, used to wear the white lace tops. If they didn't wear a bra, if they got wet, they'd be like they'll see through. Same with the guys. Guys used to wear those white lace things. As soon as it rained, you see the guys walking down the road with a hand over it because they knew straight away they'll see through it and they'd get arrested for it. I'm not making up, I'm not being a pearl, I'm just telling you the facts. I'm sitting there in a cab rank, you see him walking down the road wearing pure white cotton clothing. You don't want to know what happens when you wear a white cotton shirt. Look, you almost, if, that, if I made that wet, you can see right through that. You know that, it sticks to you. It's just fact, right, fact. Not being a pervert, not being rude, not being queer, strange. I was sitting in a cab. I'm watching them. That's what cab drivers do. Cab drivers sit in a taxi because they watch and see what's going on around them in case that person gets into their taxi. And they sum them up before they even get in the car. And they say, no, mate, not taking you because you're too drunk. I just seen you walking down there and you fell over. Mate, I'm not taking you. I just seen you put that grapey 12 inch blade down, down inside your sock. You watch for yourself. You watch your own back. You're a cab driver. You're in Byron Bay. You're going to go to the foothills of Byron Bay. <laughs> Donnie Marshall. Give your name. Donnie Marshall. Back in 2000. Uh, no, 1993. Driving a cab. Pendrum. <laughs> Cut his throat. He dead now, poor Donnie. Didn't dive in the cut. Just missed his eye order by half an inch. Uh, three, uh, two, one, one millimetre. Corroded artery, just missed it. Yeah, it could be neck like that and get to the hospital. And a 14 year old kid cut his throat. See? 14 year old kid cut a 55, 50 year old cab driver's throat in Pender back in 1993. Don Marshall. He's dead now. Well, of course, he'd be dead now. 50, then be 80 something now. No, he'd be old, old stutter guts. I'll be dead in a bit, 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 in a minute. Yeah, we're just calling him stutter guts. But anyway, didn't love that. So as a cab driver, you learn to watch people. You learn how people move. They're watching birds because that's where your money comes from. Does it make sense now? You've got to see where the people go. And that's why I get talk to the people when I lived there as a cab driver. I said, where do you go? What do you do? And they said, when it comes this time, we go down to Cozy Corner. I heard about Cozy Corner 30 years ago. I said, which way do you go? They said, we go down by the park 30 years ago because it's flat. All the backpackers know it. That's why the French guy was there. Backpacker tells backpacker who tells another backpacker who then tells the next backpacker tells the next backpacker. It's like how yeah, they stopped at my campsite up there at Brunswick, up at uh, Burring Bar. Go and watch my YouTube channel, Burring Bar. I talk about it. I went up there in my bath. And two backpackers followed me in. They spent the night. And I come back there a couple of years later. There's 400 bloody backpackers there. 400 of them. For free camping in Burring Bar, up in, the, up in the mountains. But they're still in, but then they're outside of Byron Bay City Council. They're in Tweed City Council. And they think they're safe because they've got the old Pacific Highway, which is now defunct. It's now called Tweed Valley Way. Road runs off it into a dead end virtually. You've got the town, the shops this side, and on this side you've got the old railway station with the train tracks. There's no buildings. There's no nothing. It's all green grass. There's two picnic tables and a toilet. And a big hand basin, great big wash tub, big steel tub. It's in the video. You can see it. Well, that's a gold mine, your backpacker. 
They all went there, 400 of them. Now they stopped it. The sign comes up and says, no camping here, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., $1,000 fine. So the backpackers all went there, top backpacker, top backpacker, top backpacker, top backpacker. And they stuffed it. And that's what they do. They stuff it up for everybody. They stuff it up in local Australians. So really, actually going up there on holidays with no backpackers around, it's absolutely a blessing. It was absolutely great. I'm sorry to say to all you backpackers around the world, it was great at Byron Bay. It was a lozies. Except for that one French guy who reckons he's been there for three years. And he, he was a dickhead. What, 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 why are you filming? Why are you filming? Why are you filming? Why are you filming? Five times he asked me, why are you filming? Because he thought I was going to dob him in for sleeping in the car. I don't want to know about him. He's an idiot. What's he doing sleeping in the car anyway? He's lying. If he loses a bronze again, he should have drove home. I'm not taking a thousand dollar ticket. And don't say he's up there surfing. He's half a kilometre away from the beach. No surfboard. He's lying on his bed in his car with his thing. He's got his camper thing up on the roof. Go look at the video. You see him. Dickhead. Absolute dickhead. And I wonder why they get bumped off and just not like, look at those. Backpackers over the years have disappeared. They always disappear throughout Australia. That's why I went down Theo, because Theo was an easy one, because I knew the terrain. I knew that was easy. These other ones, look at these ones. Um, oh, what was it? What was it? Uh, you got the guy in the in the Irish guy out in the middle of Australia on the road going to Darwin. He lives in a house across the road from the lady who makes meat pies. Old Patrick, old Paddy. Paddy's disappearance, go look it up. Accuse the lady across the road who makes some pies and chopping him up and selling him in meat pies. Really? Then the guy in the pub had a crocodile in the back of the pub. Um, and then somebody else says, oh, you know, but they're always fighting, the three of them or whatever. What's to say Paddy just didn't go home? So I had to get drunk and go for a walk out in the scrub with his dog and just kept going and got lost. He's in the outback. Wouldn't take much to fall out and break your leg. You'd be stuck out there. Then they reckon they had a search. But by then, anything could have come along and ate him. You know, eat the, so he eat the things the outback eat meat. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Anyway, get back on the Theo. Anyway, then we're going to get on the Bathurst. So the I'm uploading two videos. I've seen, I've seen Australia. I know Australia's landscape. I go between, as I said, I do all the New South Wales as a former cab driver. I did all Sydney as a cab driver. I worked in the radio room as a cab driver. I drove a wheelchair cab, and I know all the people, and like disabled people and disabilities, I know what people can tolerate because like what I've got to put up with my bad bloody knees and my, my deformed elbows, right? So I understand disability people. I understand mentally disabled disability people because I used to pick them up. I understand normal people, drunk people, business people, lawyers, doctors, police, everybody, because I used to pick them all up in the cab. It's the greatest education tool there is. You ever want to get educated, go come on a cab driver. Don't come an Uber driver. You'll get your throat cut. Now, Uber over here, nobody catches Ubers anymore. Not really, because it's coronavirus. <laughs> you know what they did two years ago? These suckers went out and they went, went and bought a brand new car on Uber. Sorry, I'm getting off the story. This is just another example of what I learned, my amount of knowledge. They went and bought these brand new cars. I, I found the site. You buy a brand new car under Uber, right? Uber guarantees you to work and they pay for the car out of your money and a certain percentage of it. As long as you keep working, they pay for the car, and then eventually after three to five years, you own the car. We've had two years of coronavirus now, and they're not like, picking up anybody. I got on the XPT from Sydney to Mwollomba. It used to be a chopper block train four years ago. It used to be full. You couldn't get a seat in car A, one, two, three, seats in car A in one cabin alone. There was three seats. They're all taken. I was in there by myself with just four other people 
in the whole carriage. And then two policemen got in and they sat there and they free, free rode in the train. Then car B behind me was a full seated first class seat, uh, full carriage full of first class seats. And that had six people in it. Then you've got car C with a buffet car, which is half the carriage, and they have two people in it. And then you had D and E, which had a total of 10 people in it. D had five, E had five. And then there was another carriage on the back, and that was dead empty. Now, two years ago, when I come back from Christmas in December 2019, 2018, I come back down during the bushfires. I had to squeeze my way through from first class car A all the way down to second class, and I found my mate Glenn, who used to be my boarder, and they were jam packed. And they come up and sat up there with me in car A, and the lady said, Yeah, take him up there, put him down as your carer. Right? So you already paid for your ticket to go from uh, Brisbane uh, to, to Sydney or Broadmeadow, and he ended up moving up the first class with me sitting up there in a the cabin because I had the cabin all to myself. See, that was Glenn, Glenn, uh, maybe his name, Alan, I mean, not Glenn, Alan. And he was there with me on the train. And the train was chock a block. Now, they're empty, the ghost trains. So how's Uber making any money? Hostels up there screaming out for money. You don't see the hostel cars driving around by and by anymore. You don't see all the backpackers standing out in the main street of Byron Bay anymore. All you backpackers of Byron Bay you used to be there 20 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago. You used to see them, all the backpacks all lined up catching the bus. Good. It's all the white Caucasian Australian locals and the local indigenous. Not even Queenslanders allowed in. Are they, Chris? No. They're not allowed to come out of the border. So it's great. It's all white Caucasian Australians and out local Aborigines, all Aussies, and all up there and a good party. You want to see the tape? Let's see if I'll play it for you. Oh, there's the other Chris trying to ring me. Sorry, Chris, not at the moment, mate. Not on the live stream, maybe. Right. Um, yeah, ring you back later, Chris. Right. Uh, Frank did do that to me last night, too. He rang up on, on a live stream and he, he stuck his nose in. And I said, Frank, I'm on live stream. And, and he just kept talking and talking and talking and talking and talking. He doesn't realise I can't pause it. I can't put you on hold. Right? Now, this is what Byron Bay's like. I had a good time up there with Chris. I didn't have any problems up there with Chris. Um... Okay, all you people there from around the world, do you want to see what Byron Bay looks like? Now, this is just after I left the beach, after filming the... Uh, there goes a, a traveller's hostel. This is all the hundred slice that they come up here for. There's a guy running across the road there, the crock pot full of food. See, it's all bright lights. They're There's nobody there, there. look. Get out down here, have a look. There's nobody the walking around. And hey, look at the amount of people here. Now they're there. They don't use reducing costs. I just expect you to stop. The people all the way out of there. Can you hear them? Oh, shut up. You listen to them. Oh, 
all going in the pub, so they're all over 18. Right. Yeah, this is coming in towards Bourne Bay Railway Station. The only railway station doesn't have a train. So the Bourne Bay is a different world. Where's all the backpackers? Can you see them? You watch when I turn the corner. No more backpackers. It's all locals. <laughs> this, by the way, has been recorded backwards, mirrored on this, because I'm putting this camera phone into this way. So this is how like I'm on my left hand drive, or not, I'm a right hand drive. You didn't see that, did you, Peter? That's good. Look, being on a skateboard. He's about 40 years old and he's carrying a skateboard. Nothing wrong with it, but that's what I'm trying to tell you. That's good. He's not even looking, look. Kind of Walked straight out on the road and didn't even look. Now this is a railway bar, friendly bar hotel. So why does the government reopen the railway line? And that's a big new interchange on the other side for all the buses. You you want to see how big this joint is? This is why the backpackers don't catch a bus in the main street of Byron Bay anymore. They built a big new interchange. The coronavirus, they're not there. So when the backpackers come back, they go, oh, we used to catch a bus over here. No, mate, out the other side of the train station. They pissed them off out of town. They put them out, out the town. The rails are still there. They're just being built in. See, there's the train station. There's the new interchange, the second building on the right. But see, what happens is all these people that are going to come back there after coronavirus are going, where's all the bus stop going? Oh, see the train station over there? Oh, over the other side in the, in the old dead end back street or the old dead end or the old back street. They put it over there because they're coaches and cars and trucks and backpacker vans and Woolworths trucks. Everything's trying to get through one little narrow street and like you see, anybody just walks across the road they don't look, they're going to get wiped out, right? So they said, right, if you're in coronavirus, they moved it out the back. This is it. Now, this is what they've done. But they lock them. Is it open to walk into? Oh, yeah. This is the old Byron Bay train station. They left the rails here, haven't they? That's the old water tower. This is the old water pipe. See that? It's got the big round circle there. Oh, so that came from over there to here. That's it. That's, that's, a water that's the guy that's trying to ring me. So there's the old water tower over there. So that's the big new bus terminal. See? It's got. So when they all come back, they won't be over there on the main street. It'll be when the dead end back street. And build up the same train going back to Sydney. That's why it's here. This end of the platform. Pipe going under and this is the water train. There it goes right across. Some people just don't understand. <laughs> right. Anyway, let's go. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. No, I honestly, I, I just get. Sometimes I just get frustrated. People don't have to walk the two kilometres back in the. Yeah, you know, sometimes I just get frustrated. Sorry, Chris, if it sounded like I was getting nasty, but sometimes I just get frustrated. The people can't see something that's so obvious. Why they build something the way they build it, or they put things where they put it, or why the government do what they do. It's just common sense. Sorry, but it's just logistical. That's why they would put a water tower stand in between two rails, is to put water in a steam engine. It's just a simple thing. Chris has his moments. He has his mental disability. I apologise, Chris. Don't think I'm having a go at you. I'm not. But I just get frustrated when I'm filming and people ask me questions all the time. I don't take my own son, Chris, out with me filming anymore. I don't take his wife out with me filming anymore. And I don't take anybody. And that's why I said next time I come up there, I'm going to get a rental car. Because then it's like when I go filming up here. I used to go up 
to um, the other one I'll take a film with, with me is old Peter because he's 76 years old and he's got asbestosis and he can't talk. And he just sits there and he just puts his hand up and doesn't want to be on camera. He doesn't say anything. I took Matthew Coit. Hello, Coit. Took him out there. Blah, 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 blah. You see the videos on the YouTube channel anymore? No, I deleted them. Every time I was halfway through, what? Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. He's asked me a question. Doesn't realize the camera's still rolling. I don't edit. I just, you know, I don't edit. I don't know how to edit. I just live stream. And that's why people like my channel, because I don't edit. I do it live. I do it live. Like now I'm talking to you. I don't edit. I don't apologize. I don't apologize to anybody. I am who I am and what I am, and that's how I am. And Chris is what he is, and my son Chris is what he is, and everybody is what you are. And if you can't accept that, you want to get apology from somebody for you being the way you are, you need to build in there. You really do, because you are what you are. That's what mum used to say. That's how God made you something like a, like a stew. That's what they put in the pot and mixed you up and out you come. You are what you are. Or as they say, you are what you eat. Or you are what you drink. Or, but I don't go into that. Anyway, not for Theo, not for me. And that gives you a look at Byron Bay today without backpackers. Totally and utterly different. Now, you want to see what an Aussie's like. And this is what you get when you talk to an Australian guy. <laughs> now, this guy's up there. Uh, already got one thumbs up. Uh, back on the right track again. <laughs> one and four, look at that, see? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Where are we? I'm going up in numbers, 177 now. So look, that's how far you away from Sydney. Come back, Luke. That's my Luke joke. He ran down the bush. There we go. Look, see? There goes Luke. Um, this is me meeting somebody. G'day. Mr. Hominoid, guess what? I'm up here at North Beach Railway Station. Now, he doesn't want his face on camera. I don't blame him. He's so good looking. He won $5 million last month. And he's got all these women chasing him around ocean shores. Look there. Look there. He's got a red jumper on. Look, he's got his own water bottle. And he's a sex symbol of Brunswick heads. Right? And he gets all the girls. Right. Now, come on. Go back here. No, his name's Luke. Now, tell me the story. Now, you didn't know who I am. No. And you just better walk up the train tracks. That's right, yeah. And what, what were you going to look at? You don't know what? No, I was just going up. Just talking around. Yeah. Right, I'll tell you what's right up there. 886 is right there. Now, 886 means that 886 kilometres exactly. Now, why is he walking up there? Number one platform in Sydney. Because there's nothing else to do in Byron Bay. It's coronavirus lockdown. People are bored. People talk to each other. It's not like Sydney. You walk down the street and say, what are you talking to me for? I don't know. What do you want to talk to me for? Foreign Bay. It's a little hamlet. It's a little... Everybody knows everybody. And all hippies, they all smoke the weed or do, you know, or they go into Sydney to work and they come home. He's, he's back in um, Ocean Shores or wherever he is. And he works in Fox Studios in Sydney. You see? And he's got no work on because of coronavirus. He can't go down there. So he's got to stay home. Well, isn't he lucky? He stays home at Byron Bay. Ocean Shores just up the road. He rode his bike. Well, he's 30 years old. Because he's lucky. Because up there, they use the old Pacific Highway as rail trails. Yeah, he doesn't have to go up out on the motorway 
he's got the old Pacific Highway when you come out out of Byron Bay to get a great big long cycle track all the way footpath, all the way right out to the motorway past Byron Bay Hospital. And turns right, goes over the grass, and then there's part of the old Pacific Highway that I used to drive down 40 years ago. And it's a four-lane road, two-lane road with double yellow lines, and there's no cars on it. And he just rides down there, and the motorway's right next to him about 10 metres away. Still got the big guardrail, so a truck's not going to fly across and hit him. And it goes up and down. And then it goes out past the airport, out there through Tiagra, and he goes past the shop, and then you go around the back of the shop, and you squeeze out there through the fence. And then, then there's another footpath that takes you right out there, right out there into Brunswick Heads. And then he goes down through Brunswick Heads instead of going around the motorway, and you pull up there and have a drink at the corner shop, and then he goes around the back past the fish markets, and then he then he goes around the old Pacific Highway, which is Tweed Valley Way, and you see the motorway at the top and the new the old Tweed Valley Way right next to it, over the Brunswick River, and he goes over that and he goes round a roundabout, and then he can either pedal up the hill past the speed camera or turn right and pedal up the hill up over the town and go around the Ocean Shores that way. So there's plenty of ways to go out to Ocean Shores from Byron Bay on a push bike. So, you know. A lot of these idiots have got no idea up there what to do, you know. But see, with the COVID-19 pandemic, there's no backpackers. There's no rangers driving around. You don't see any of the backpacker cars with um, Juicy written on it. You don't see uh, weekend holiday travel or those weekend, what do they call them, um, Maori. Vans. You don't see any of them. I went, Chris drove me, friend Chris from Moomba, he drove me out on the Tweed Valley Way and we come off the motorway and then we went down past, I looked over in the big truck stop car park and there's no Maori vans, there's no juicy vans, no backpacker vans, there's no camper vans from Queensland, there's no camper caravans or anything. It's just got three vans, three cars in there. See, because the border shut to Queensland and the airports are shut from overseas. So we don't get all the backpackers, we don't get all the hitchhikers, we don't get any of the, any of the bullshit. It's just local Australians around Byron Bay with Theo disappeared. It's just local Australians now. But Theo disappeared when the borders were still open. Was it a Queenslander bumped him off? But as I said, Theo just came out of the cheeky monkey, walked up the street, walked up, walked back, Walked up, went down south, come down one kilometre, one mile south of the headland, walked right up the beachfront, walked up to the top of the hill, walked back down, walked up and around, and then he walked down, put down his phone, put down his phone, and then 12 hours later, his phone goes around the headland, which is where the sign is. It says, don't go past this headland sign. The media is trying to make out it's over here where he first walked along the sand and went up the sand dunes. It's not. It's over on the other side of the rock face. Thank you very much, Katrina. Thank you very, very, very much. I hope I do. I hope I do help you. That's great. Love it. I hope you did subscribe and everything else. I'm a factful person. I drive a cab. I'm into reality, you know. I met people. You know, I met Whoopi Goldberg, Poison, Midnight Oil, In Excess. I've, drove, I've driven home the former Labor um, uh, Midnight Oil. What's the singer of Midnight Oil? Somebody tell me. I've, I've got a blank spot. Um, and he jumps up and now um driven him home three times. He lives at Randwick and then he went into Australian politics. Um oh god. Tony? No, not Tony. Um Helen? No. What's his name? What's the guy who sings the Midnight Oil? Down you know, he sings the Australian songs, you know. He jumps up and down like a 
like his ass is sitting on a hot barbecue. Um, <laughs> I've lost it. Got a blank spot. I'm getting old. 61. Come on, not 50. I'm 61. Uh, thanks for your channel. Your channel. Hashtag. Thank you. Subscribe. And I have to see 178 up there now when I go and check. Make sure you hit the bell too. Whereabouts are you, Katrina? Are you in Sydney, Australia, or where are you around the world? I want to send you something if you let me. I want to send you a postcard. Would you like a postcard? Anything you like. I don't care. I don't I don't want your home address. Give me give me the local coffee shop address. That'll do. I don't want your personal I don't want nobody's personal address. Never. PO box, work PO box. I've already got your name. It's up there on the screen. So where are you? Where are you in the world, Katrina? Where are you? Just tell me that. Say you in Australia, America, New Zealand. Where I, I can't see nothing. That's all I've got. I'll send you something. Cheer you up. Make you happy. I'll send you a nice surprise. Do you like cars? Do you like horses? Do you like cows? I mean, I don't know. What's your, what's your favourite thing? I do everything. I, I mean, everything in this channel. I do yowie stories. I do train stories. I do I go riding around on trains. I do everything. Right? I'm a... I'm not one of these YouTubers that just sit there and do the same old thing like Mr. Beast and sit there and throw his people in jelly. And goes out and buys a whole bunch of cars and a car yard and gives them away. I don't believe in that. Anyway, let's get on the next part, Bathurst. Right, we've got Bathurst coming up. Bathurst is this Sunday. Yes, this Sunday is Bathurst. Here's my Theo towel. Yes, this is the towel that was in the filming of Theo. This is the one I picked up on the beach. Look, I washed it. It's nice and clean. Look, it's lovely. It's a brand new bloody towel. So we just left it behind. My board has destroyed all my other towels, so I found another one. There we go. There's Bathurst. See, Bathurst. So if, if you're into... Um, Stuff about Bathurst. I've got a couple of postcards here at Bathurst. There's that's Mount Panorama. Can you see that? Put it right up as close as I can get it. See Mount Panorama. There you go. That's the actual racetrack. So if you're just a, a car car nut. Are you on a Mount Panorama map? You're free. Yeah, look, I just fold it up like so. And I've even got one right here somewhere next to me, somewhere. Free stamp down below. There you go. You see down there. You were a couple of hours ago. Look at it. Oh, my big backside. Where is it? I went and bought a whole bunch of pre stamp envelopes. There is somewhere. You want one of those um, Bathurst maps? I got Bathurst racetrack postcards. I got Bathurst uh, railway station. If you the trains, I got the Bathurst railway station. Ben Chifley used to work there, former Prime Minister, and there's Chifley Drive named after him. The town of Chifley is named after him. Chifley Square named after him in Sydney. Um, Chifley Place, Chifley Park, Ben Chifley Park, a couple of the Chifleys. Um, he's all Bathurst. Uh, there's a park in Bathurst named after him, Ben Chifley Park, I think. I think. Can't remember. Um so if you want something on Bathurst, I've got to be, it cost me money. I've got this thing is a Bathurst Memorial coin. Now that cost me several dollars. Not cheap. And it's Bathurst. Right? 2795 
1815. So if you want it, somebody wants a coin on Bathurst, you let me know. That's the only one I got, 1815. You want it? Send me an email. Right? So what's happened here? Right. Um, so if you want something on Bathurst, as I just said, there's more people coming on the channel. I've got the maps, I've got postcards, I've got the court I've got the courthouse, I've got the Bathurst stickers. It says Bathurst. It doesn't say 1000, just says Bathurst. If you want the Bathurst stuff, like where this Holden stuff is, mobile and all that. No, you can't have me shirt. No, we're not going to sign it and give it to you. You like it? Oh, so. Yeah. Peter Garrett, thank you. You find yeah, but yeah, I'll go Peter Garrett over, actually. First time I drove him home was in a wheelchair cab. And he turned around and he goes, um, oh, I can't get in this cab. You're you're meant there for somebody else. I said, no, Peter. I called him by name. I said, I know who you are. Don't discriminate. I said, you're discriminating against me because I drive a wheelchair cab and you're an able-bodied person. That's worse than being a disabled, a normal cab discriminating against a wheelchair person, but they've got no choice. They can't get in because they've got wheelchairs. You're discriminating against me because I drive. Yeah, Peter Garrett. Thank you, Katrina. I got it. I got it, Katrina. Where are you, Katrina? What, what country? Where are you? Um, so Peter Garrett said, oh, he said, I just didn't think it would be right for me to get in it. I said, no. I said, now you're holding up the queue. There's all people there. And then Peter Garrett turned around and said, well, no, I don't want to get in it. I want to get in a normal car. So he walked off behind me. And he went up to Ramwick. I thought, right, I'll remember you, Peter Garrett. This is 24 years ago. Just remember. It was when he came in the old ANSET terminal. Yeah, I remember exactly where it was. Where, what car? I was driving a St. George taxi bus with a you know, the St. George dragon on it. Anyway, uh, another day I got a booking, come out of Ramwick. And we ran there, Peter Garrett gets over and gets in the cab. I said, oh, how are you going, Pete? I said, you remember me? He goes, no. So I drove off. And I said, where are we going? He said, I'm going into the city. He's going to a labour meeting down in city, Sussex Street. And I said, I'm the guy in the St George cab that you didn't want to get in at the airport. I said, you discriminated against me when you got out and got in the car behind me. I said, thank you for your discrimination, being discrimin you know, discriminated against me. And he sort of like looked at me like, why? I said, because then I got I got three single fare, three single fares, one to Motorvale, one to Avalon, and one to Wild Beach. They're $110 each, 120 and $130. I made $360 in one drive. <laughs> Thank you, Peter Garrett, for being a racist discriminating. <laughs> In my little St George taxi bus, which is down the Southern Shire, and here I am driving right up to Northern Beaches. That's what I say. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. I've been every. I've been everywhere. I've been everywhere. So thank you, Peter Garrett. <laughs> Your discrimination gave me three hundred and something bucks. <laughs> I said he allows you twenty five dollar cab fare. <laughs> I didn't mind. And then a couple of weeks later. Again, he walks out, he, uh, he um, hails me a pull up, gets in. I say, I know where you're going, Pete. I, dro I picked you up, like, remember the other week when I told you about when you discriminated? I said, I know where you live. She's right. I put my foot down before I get out in the door. I drove him home, right to his door, and he went, Man, you've got a good memory. I said, Yeah. How could you ever forget Peter Garrett? <laughs> he was a racist. <laughs> he gets disabled people's taxis. Not disabled people. He just didn't want to ride in a disabled taxi, which discriminated against me. I'm just a normal cab driver in a normal car with a meter. Well, not a normal car, but still got the regular same meter. Nothing different. But anyway, it's all right. I made I made an extra three hundred dollars that day. Thank you, Peter. Oh, that's right. That's right. Then I come back down to Monavale, and I got a Monavale back to the airport. I forgot about that. That was another hundred and ten. <laughs> 
because by the time we went down through the peak hour traffic on the way through. <laughs> Thank you, Peter Gary. You made me a lot of money that day. So you think you make a lot of money selling records? I made a lot of money out of you. <laughs> so they don't always, they don't always, they don't always win. Anyway, so I'm going out there to uh, Bathurst. Yeah, Peter Gary, he's just around off um, Belmore Street, Randwick, and you've got a little back street around the back, and he's just down around in there. That's about all I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I'm not allowed to tell you where he lives. I wonder if he's still jumping up and down. <laughs> anyway, poor old Theo. Uh, I've got to go and upload part one now, Theo's video. So if you're going to go down, what's that? I put it all together. I put the... The tide charts, I put the, um, uh, what else did I put? Uh, the tide charts, the GPS tracking maps, the the way the news reporters try to twist it and they try to make it look like he's murdered and all this sort of crap. And then I get it wrong. I believe it's a high tide. It was actually, I said low tide. Then I said it was a high tide because what they said. And then I reset. Then I actually on this computer. Then actually found Brunswick Heads tide chart. You've got Byron Bay, Brunswick Heads right next door, and on the on that day, first of June two thousand nineteen. So nailed it. I nailed it. He was there twelve oh eight. He got there eleven forty eight. Gone for a swim by twelve oh eight. Tide's going out by that, and he's gone in sucked out in the waste because all the ocean comes in this side it's got to go out and goes out this side next to you here next to the rock face of the mountain here goes out like a drain hole and that's exactly where he walked in next day 12 o'clock somebody walks down the beach finds his phone walks around the headland craig young said you were sassy post oh well thank you craig I don't, know. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that's what people do. So me, Mr. Hominoid, go check it out. Let Theo number... I'll go and get it. I'll make sure it's uploaded first. Anyway. Well, that's good. The telephone said bus bus disruptions. I don't know what that's all about. What's it all about? Um, I don't know. Where is it? So, I don't know. Super crap. Um, let's, see we, let's just see if we can find something different. There we go. Theo's event. 95% loaded. I've actually got to wait. And do the one that I did last night with Mr. Dog sitting on me there. 3.50 a.m. in the morning. And there's Theo underneath again. It's 18 views. Oh, you think, oh, yeah, that's great. No, well, you want to see this one. You don't think the Theo hates get much story. An old bloke like me. 10, 9, and then here we go. This is one of the uh, French back backpacker in the background. It's got 171 views. But these two are going to correct that one, and they're also going to use that one for an example to show people's uh, negativity and stupidity. Look at that French guy was acting so bloody stupid. Oh, why are you filming? Why are you filming? Five times he asked me, why are you filming? I said, I do YouTube, mate. Don't you know what you YouTube is? And he's thinking I'm going to film him and give him his number plate to the council and dob him in saying he's parking there for a $1,000 fine. I can't know he just stupid. <laughs> to me, they're just, he's French. He's been in Australia for three years. Go home. You reckon he was a bronze again? Why didn't he go home? What's he doing? Parking sinisterly 
up a dead end street in the back of Byron Bay. To me, it looks like a sexual deviant. Because of where he's parked. Go and look at the video. Look where he's parked, up around the back streets. So it'd be really good to brunt again. What's he doing there? Why don't he just drive home? I got a video. It says how long it takes to drive from Brunswick Heads to Byron, uh, Byron Bay. It takes 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So what's he doing parking there if he really lives at Brunswick? Bullshit. It's lying. It's a backpacker. If he lived in the car for three years, that's what he's doing. Look at the roof of his car. Look, you can see it. He by himself. Like but he would have walked this. What? And what they used to do was, you wait for it. Proof. It's on many of documentaries. Is it their whole tracking? Because he turned it an evil. But the backpackers, the backpackers, yeah. So why would that backpacker now be parked up here? Now there you go, right on camera, not planned, not staged. It's you listen to him. No, we just drove up here. He's there because well, there he is. Look down the trail. He's down the side of the car. See, you watch. You see what he's done? He just disappeared yeah, into so the car. I'll, do, I'll put you on pause. I'll get out of the car and we'll have a little chat with the backpacker and whatever else, and then we'll get out and I'll come back and uh, and it's pissing it's about the about the bugger off down here with rain. So I've got to be quick. So there we go. We got a backpacker's car. And it's like this jumper. He reckons he's not living in the car. Well, why is the box up there in the Hello. roof? Why is his jumper hanging out there? Now, this is reversed okay, around. Well, the man here with me is, hang on, I don't need any names. I'm not going to show your face, but it's camera's recording. So you're from France, French. Yeah. You're living in Brunswick. Yeah. You've been here for how long in Australia? Couple of years. Three years, maybe. Three years. Yeah. You didn't hear about Theo Hayes, the missing backpacker from Byron Bay who disappeared? Oh, that was a year ago or something? It was two and a half years ago. Yeah, all right. June the 1st, 2019. All right. This is where he disappeared. Here. Right here where you're parked. All right. Right, you come over here and I'll show you. Right. So down here, that's what he did. He walked down here with his friends. Now, you watch how many times he cuts in and interrupts. This trail. It really gives me the shit. All the way down there, down to the beach. Now, this is a reverse image on the camera, by the now, way. Now, his GPS tracking, uh, this is the French backpacker back stand next to me, not my friend, right? So you can say hello, you can say something in French. Hello. What did I say? Say that what? Say that's my name. <laughs> what was it? I say je m'appelle Alexandre. Oh, there you go. So there you are. There's a real French name. So I didn't make it up, right? <laughs> right. Now. Now he's he laughing now, right? The beach, and he walked right over there to Cozy Corner. All right. Under the top over there. Underneath the top, right up in the corner of the beach, and he was there one hour after the tide started going out. It was and actually low tide, one hour before it finished going out, see? That, that's the misinformation later, they gave me. Unbeknown to him, his OPPO phone made in China, which is why the Australian government doesn't want Hawiva or OPPO in Australia, because the Chinese, Chinese communists plant secret tracking devices in them. This has been proven. It's not a theory. It's been proven. Australian federal government will not let any Hawivas oppose into any government facility or any politician and anybody in business should never ever own one because the secret spyware that this Australian federal policeman after Theo's disappearance June this year I think it was June his family cracked his code to the Google account. They accessed it, sent it to the... Sorry. They then also gave it to the uh, Australian Federal Police Cyber Crimes Unit, and he accessed it. And he said that phone had a secret tracking device. And then at midday, it shows it walking around the headland I ran to the point on the north, the directly north tip of Byron Bay Headland. And then the battery died 
and then nothing's ever seen or heard from him again. The phone has never been found. It was only recovered that information off the Google. And that's how they found out it had secret tracking because he turned it off at 12 0. And then, then the I next day. The total charts for Byron Bay on that night. And they're exactly one hour and five minutes behind, behind, after. So 12 midnight. After Fort Denison in Sydney. So that's where I got screwed up. I got mucked up. So I found the, found the Brunswick Heads timetable. So there's two videos behind it. You'll get the right times. So I went up there with the wrong information. So out of that deduction. Now he's losing. I'm getting him confused. It's warmer. About it, yeah. Mm. You like to have a hot bath? Four serving brothers, they love surfing in the cold because of the water's warmer. They come out and say, Yeah, it's great, the water's warm because it's cold. See, he was in the first of June, which is the middle of our winter, or as Americans say, fall. So he's gone cricket, but what he didn't realize from this side is a big current. And it comes around the headland, chucks a anti-clockwise turn around a little island. Then it comes around, around that point, swoops in past the beach, comes down here, and then goes out to sea. So it disappears in the He's gone out in the current. See, he's losing. Then I googled shark attacks. Now, you tell me why it's in Australia has amount of shark attacks. Byron, maybe? Byron. 47 a year. All white pointers. All Byron Bay headland. Right. Doesn't believe it. Oh, right. 47 a year. Now, we can't even work that out. In the 60? 52 what weeks in a year, there's 47. Isn't that roughly one a week? Four, Four per month. Four twelve is forty eight, forty seven, right? Four a month. Mm -hmm. That's one a week. So he doesn't get That's it. More than Melbourne so gets, more than Sydney gets, the Parramatta and Sydney ever gets. Just went surfing out on Main Beach, that much. Bay. See, up. ignorant. They he doesn't done. realise there's that many duck attacks. From their surfboards, that big rock island, past the old shipwreck, and sit out there and wait two hours for the lifesavers to come up from Brunswick with their boat to come out and get them because the sharks were going around the island. Trying to get the girls. Mm. Mm. See, but he's not understanding what I'm saying. See, all people have got to do. Hey, you, you wait YouTube for the next question you ask me. It's unbelievable. A research YouTube stories of sharks in Byron Bay. Mm. And you'll see how many different encounters sharks are chasing people up the beach or chasing surfboards. Or in June this year, a guy had a 12 inch hole, massive 12 inch with 12 inch hole in it. Mm -hmm. And that was him on Main Beach. Yeah, right. So where? So can, can I ask you why you're filming? Because it's a YouTube channel. Oh, well, that's a YouTube channel. Yeah. So anyway, that's why I'm doing it. I'll come 900 kilometers to do the story. 900 kilometers. Yeah, to do the story. He doesn't anyway, get it. There, Mr. Hamanoi. I hope you enjoy that, and I'll be back in a minute. Yeah. No, I'm... Anyway, well, this is where Theo. You were just there in the background? He's still trying to keep talk. Just walked away from him. That is on his GPS tracker. He walked right through that point there. My sympathies go there to the family. Now, I'm going to go... See, right there. The other way. Did you hear that bit? Oh, you little boo. I went... Bugger off. Because I knew I was talking to a brick wall. Oh, really? 47 sharks a year? Oh... No wonder they get eaten. No wonder they get murdered. Told you, if you're in a triangle, they're in a world of their own in Byron Bay, Mother Bimby and Brunswick Heads and Broken Head. You can feel it. When you drive out of Broken Head, you head towards Ballina, you feel the pressure in your brain change or something. You feel this weird feeling go. When you go past Brunswick Heads and go up over the hill at Ocean Shores, you feel the same thing. It comes out off your head. This do-do-do world.
You think I'm kidding. You got to go there to experience it. That's what they call it, the 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 Bermuda Triangle of Australia. It's just it's where all the goo goos go. You know, it's just one of those things, you know. Right, so that's processing. Good. Okay, so by, uh, Theo Part 2 is now processing on this live stream now at 8.16 p.m. And now I'll upload Part 1. Nathan, what are you, hello, Nathan, what are you doing? I'll get up a minute. I'll see what Nathan wants. Call me when you want. Hello, handsome. I'm doing a live stream on YouTube. You want to say hello to everybody? Yeah, look. Say hello. Look, live stream. Look. Yeah, I'm doing a live stream. Look. There's, there's me on camera. Look. See the camera? Oh, sorry. We're down. Where are we? Where's the camera? Oh, sugar. I've got the camera upside down. Where is it? No, that's the speaker. Oh, there we are. Look. See? Where have we got the camera? Stupid thing. Yeah, Nathan, look. Yeah, Nathan, look. Yeah, Nathan, look. <laughs> I'll do it again this time. There you go, look. See? Look, I'm on a live stream on, on the internet, on YouTube. So this is Nathan, my best mate. He's been mates with me for 10 years. Hello, Nathan. So hello to all the girls. Yeah, yeah he's, he's single um, um, and he's um, a multi-millionaire. Bye. I'll do it again this time, Nick. He'll probably come on the channel now. <laughs> that's that, uh, not TikTok, Snapchat. Uh, yeah, Snapchat. Yeah, that's Snapchat. <laughs> um, let me see which one I've got here. That's, that's the second one. Yeah, this is the first one. I think that's it. I, I better just check my uh, YouTube, make sure I don't reload the same uh, video up there twice. Um, what's that a pipe in there? Is that it? I, ju I just want to see what. Sorry about that. Can't run around memory. Part two. Right, part two. Right, that's the one with the, the map on it. Right, so we want this one. Pull it. Theo part one. That's all I'm going to call it. Theo part one. A is part one. Upload. Is that loading? Yeah, it's uploading. So there it is. So there's the two. Theo's bent or whatever, and then above it uploading now Theo part two. Right? And it's got the towel on the front. So why don't I put the picture on there? That's what YouTube does. 
I could go in there, I could edit it and do all that crap. I couldn't be bothered. I just feel sorry for the ESC, I really do. Anybody else out there? Katrina, thank you very much for that story, a big long comment. I hope I didn't embarrass you. Um, I'm just reading my messages on the side here. It says, oh, someone's going to give me $5 million. I, I hope you still got me. I don't know if they come across the screen. They just took the whole bloody screen out. I don't know what's that. Anyway, good night there from Mr. Hominoid. Um, but tell me what's this one. Part one will be uploaded. So it'll be part one, part two in order. So you just play the first one, subscribe, and then push playlist or play all, whatever they call it, and then it'll come straight in. It'll go one and then two. I'll put them in order. Bye, Chris. My son, Chris. And Chris at Moorlandbar. Go and give Phil, uh, Auntie Phyllis, a big kiss for me. Uh, Auntie Phyllis. All right. No. Be good, everybody. Like, share, and subscribe. Let me know. Leave me a comment. You want something from Bathurst? You want to know something about Theo? Ask me. I love to tell you. I've done all this bloody research and nobody's talking to me. So ask me. I'd love to tell you. I want to hear your thoughts. Somebody, asked, somebody on the live stream last night said to me, Dodd, do you think he was murdered? I said, no, he wasn't murdered. Byron Bay's not that sort of town. There's, you never have a murder. I think, what was the last two famous blokes in Byron Bay? Anybody remember that? The Byron Bay bank robbers. Yeah. Anybody remember how long ago that was? That was 20 years ago. Two Aussie guys left Byron Bay, went over to America. They ran out of money in South Carolina, I think it was, or somewhere like that. They went and robbed a bank, and they said, oh, give us all the money. And everybody in the town knew them because of their Australian accent. Even though they had the hoodies on, they still they opened their mouth and they spoke because they spoke with an Australian accent. And then they pissed off out to the house and were staying at, the cops went right out there after them. They said, oh, yeah, the two Aussie guys, they come in here all the time. You know, because we, you, you all down here, we all know how you all there talk. And these two Australian guys said, you give us all the money, mate. <laughs> so g'day, mate. Give us the money. G'day, mate. <laughs> Anybody remember that? Anybody remember that? Leave me a comment on a video or this live stream. Do you remember the Byron Bay bank robbers in America? Well, they're up there now. They're now about 40 odd, 45 years of age. Yeah, they were up there when I was up there. They're still there. They'll never leave Australia again. <laughs> well, they can't anyway, coronavirus. God bless you. Good luck. Keep a smile on your face. Keep happy. Katrina, from an old man, doesn't even know you. I've been watching your channel lately. It's very interesting. It takes my mind off the really tough problems I'm going through at the moment. Thanks for your channel. Well, thank you for watching. There you go. You're an angel. Katrina, you're an angel. See you later. Bye, everybody. Good night. Maddie, all right. You want to go to the bathroom with me? You want to go to the bathroom, Matthew? All right. All right. All right. All right. See you later. Get off.